Hello and welcome. Welcome to day 23 of this book, Frameworks Volume 3, Jesus. We're thinking about God forsaken and thirsty. God forsaken and thirsty. We're homing in on the cross and Jesus' experience as he dies, uh, that story of Easter. And one of the things that we hear from the lips of Jesus is, I am thirsty. Now, uh, the imagery of water is an incredibly powerful one in the Bible, and it's uh, echoed in our experience of day-to-day -day life. We need water to survive. It's one of our fundamental basic human needs. Just uh, a day or an afternoon in sweltering hot sun without water, and perhaps you've experienced it, that sense of dryness in your throat and in your lips. Your head aches, your body uh, is sore, and it's hard to function and act and to think even. Uh, we need water. But as well as that physical sense of needing water, the Bible speaks of our need for spiritual water, that we can be spiritually parched uh, and without life. Now, the, the imagery of Bible and uh, the water in the Bible is used again and again and again. And there's two primary ways in which the Bible speaks of water. The first is with regard to the, that sense of life that we've talked about, how we need water to live, not just physically, but also spiritually. We need uh, living water, uh, the water that flows from God, that being in relationship with him and receiving the goodness and the life that he gives, we have uh, spiritual water. And so Jesus uh, speaks about giving living water. Uh, it describes uh, the Holy Spirit as uh, like a fountain welling up from inside uh, of Jesus, uh, first and foremost, but in all of God's people in giving them life. Uh, and so we need water in which uh, in order to live. Uh, water physically, but also water spiritually. Uh, the second way in which the Bible speaks of water is the chaos of waters. Not, not waters that come from a spring and which give life, but the waters of the seas and the oceans and the raging storms. That water which uh, drowns and which destroys life. That, that water which is chaotic and uncontrolled, uh, the deeps. And that water is not a good water. Uh, and we find those two things coming together, those two ideas of water uh, and uh, that thirst and also that chaos uh, coming together and coalescing uh, in Jesus' experience on the cross. Psalm 69 is a brilliant little psalm uh, which gives us insight into the experience of Jesus on the cross. It describes what's happening to Jesus when he's thirsty. And this, there's this amazing imagery, this picture, if you read uh, Psalm uh, 69, of Jesus who is thirsty and yet who is drowning. There is plenty of water and yet this is not water he can drink and which will give life. And there's the waters that drown and which are full of chaos and death and darkness. And he's lacking the water that is the water of life. And now this is an amazing insight into Jesus because, well, all through eternity, from before the creation of the world, as we study the scriptures, we see that Jesus is the one who is full of life. He is the anointed one, the Christ, the one who is full full of the Holy Spirit, full of the living waters. He is the fountain who overflows with water, and yet he is thirsty. Uh, here is the one who holds all power and authority, uh, who rules and overrules the nations, who created all things, uh, who for all eternity has known perfect peace and calm, and who has known uh, the, the pleasure of his father's love. And yet on the cross, he is thrown into chaos and he is surrounded by uncertainty. He is surrounded by fear uh, of, uh, uh, and death and darkness. And suddenly it is just chaos around him. Everything is turned upside down for Jesus on the cross. The one who is overflowing with living water is thirsty. The one who knows perfect peace and the love and the blessing of the Father is surrounded by chaos and drowns in the darkness of panic, of loneliness and of God-forsakenness. 
why? Why does this happen? Why is the one who is full of life now thirsty? Why is the one who controls the wind and the waves, who speaks peace to the storms, who rules and overrules all creation, why is he thrown into chaos? Well, because Jesus on the cross is joining us in our spiritual thirst. He is joining us in our chaos. We are not those who are full of life. We are not those who are continually overflowing with living water. We are not those who know peace. So much of our experience of life is chaos and darkness and death. And Jesus plunges into the depths to join us. But the hope of Jesus is that as he joins us in that darkness and in that chaos, as he joins us in our thirst, he doesn't remain there. And he doesn't leave us there. He doesn't join us simply to suffer with us, but to raise us with him in glory. And one day, uh, not long after the events of the cross, just three days later, Jesus again would be full of life and full of control and power and authority over all things. He would have life, life to the full. And that is the life which he offers to us. And in the words of Jesus, uh, who, uh, in John chapter 7, whoever believes in me will experience rivers of living water flowing from within them. That's our great hope. If you're feeling thirsty and parched, if you just want some life, if you feel like you're surrounded by chaos and darkness and death, turn to Jesus. He is the one who becomes thirsty for us. He is the one who experiences that God forsakenness for us so that he might lift us and draw us out to the other side.